Hi, this is Meredith with the Cedar Rapids Public Library, and I'm here to give you about five minutes worth of tips and tricks to either start on that cover letter and resume that you've been trying to work on, or maybe to circle back and make sure you're hitting all the high points on those documents so that you can show your new employer that you're just the person for the job. But before we dig in, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Bankers Trust. Bankers Trust is committed to strengthening the communities that we serve. We partner with local organizations like the Cedar Rapids Public Library Foundation to support programs that nurture and encourage growth, stability, and continued success. So overall, it doesn't matter if you're doing a cover letter or a resume, there are a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind, okay? So one, you wanna make each one unique for the job that you're applying for. So a different resume for each job. You also wanna make them efficient. So try to use fewer words, but make those words count. And don't promise anything you can't deliver on, but don't be afraid to own all the great skills you have what your experience is bringing to this new position, and show them that you really are the one that deserves this job. We're going to start talking about resumes. A lot of applications, especially if they're online, will ask you perhaps to upload a resume, and a cover letter could be the icing on the cake. So, if you have the opportunity to submit a cover letter, please do so by all means but we're gonna start with the most crucial information first. Your resume has some basic information on it. It's gonna have your contact information at the top, your relevant work experience, starting with your most recent job towards the top, and then you can put your education experience after that. That's what it looks like in its most basic form. So when I said before that you want your resume to be efficient, you want the words you use to have a high impact but not too many words, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a job description for something that you want to apply for. We're going to find some keywords and then those keywords should be right in your resume. Now if you wanted to, you could pause this to read the whole job description, but I took this it's a job description for a bookseller right off of indeed.com. So it's a real job advertisement. Now, like I said, you can read through the whole thing, but things you need to know that this employer is looking for are underlined in red. It's about customer service, being enthusiastic and engaging customers, being knowledgeable about products and services. So, these are some keywords and skills that you're going to want to make sure show up in your resume. Before we go to the actual resume part, let's talk about some other skills you want to make sure you highlight in your own resume. Those are transferable skills. Things that you do in maybe most jobs or something that you're doing in your job right now that if you looked at it just a little differently could directly relate to the job that you're trying to get. So let's run through a couple examples of how to make skills transferable. Here is a big list of transferable skills. On the left, you can see some kind of broader categories of those skills. And then as you go to the right, some more specific examples. Go ahead and hit the pause button and take a look and see what you can take from your current job experience and transfer it to the job you're looking to get. So where we're at now is you know what an employer is looking for. You can pick out the keywords from the job description, right? You also have in your head, hopefully, your most recent work experience, where you've worked, but also the job duties that you've had and some of the skills that you either have acquired or that you use at that job. And now we're gonna try and put those two things together in a unique resume. Now, when you think about the format and how you arrange the information, two things really make a big difference, I think. 
One, you want it to be easy to read and you want the important information at the top. So that means not only do you want your contact information and your name really big and bold at the top because you want them to know your name and recognize your name and how to get a hold of you, but also within each job that you've had, put the important stuff either that you're most proud of or especially if it relates to the job you're looking for at the top. So here's an example, okay? This is an example of a resume that I made with Future Ready Iowa's Resume Builder. But you can see my name is big right across the top and it goes right into work experience. I thought some of my experience as a librarian would be helpful in that I assemble and arrange display materials just like getting a selling floor ready. And from there you can see how I put my skills in right underneath that first employer and how long I was employed and what title that I held. However you're building your resume, whether it's from scratch or with Future Ready Iowa, or if you use indeed.com exclusively, they have a resume builder there as well. Just make sure you stay organized, you stay flexible in the content of your resume, and there's no reason you need to be paying money to be able to make your resume and keep it and be able to download it and send it to folks all around. If I can suggest Future Ready Iowa, they have a great resume builder where you just plug in information and based on your job title, you can choose the things that you want to add right from there, all built in with their own language. And then it exports to a really nice, clear looking document. So to touch briefly on your cover letter, you're gonna want your cover letter to be pretty efficient as well, about a page. And there's a pretty great formula for putting your cover letter together. You're gonna to wanna to start with a proper address. So that means your address and contact information at the top, your prospective employer's name and address after that, and then how you address the hiring manager. To whom it may concern, dear hiring manager, dear Chris Johnson. Then you're going to open your letter with a quick paragraph expressing your interest. Then you're gonna describe your skills and abilities using those keywords. Then you're gonna conclude with a thank you for the opportunity and then sign off with a simple sincerely. Just make sure however you're putting your resume together that you proofread it. Your personality should come through in this portion. This is where you get to be yourself, but be professional and proofread. Here's an example of how it all comes together. This is a cover letter that I wrote based on my experience for the bookseller position. If you want, take a moment and press pause so that you can read it through and get an idea of how it flows from one section to the other. You'll notice it's not that long. That was a pretty quick trip through resumes and cover letters. If you have any questions about any of the material that you saw here, if you would like me to send you a link to Future Ready Iowa's Resume Builder, or if you would like more information about the resources that the library has for workforce development or the Iowa Works Grab a Job emails, go ahead and send me an email at crawfordm at crlibrary.org. And if you have any other general questions regarding the library or library services, you can call anytime at 319-261-READ. For all of us here at the Cedar Rapids Public Library, thanks for watching.